Welcome back, Homestead Heroes. Um, today we're going to discuss herbicides, what we use here at the residence, uh, what we've used in the past, and what some of my friends use at their residential homes. Uh, first one we're going to go over is glyphosate. And glyphosate's the active ingredient in Roundup. Now, glyphosate comes in many different forms. Uh, if you see this bottle, for example, this is Roundup Concentrate. It's 51% glyphosate. So if I've got 51% glyphosate and I'm trying and I'm filling my two gallon sprayer and I've got small weeds, I'm going to use somewhere between 1.5 and 2 ounces to fill it per gallon. If I have large weeds, uh, let's say water hemp, we've got some big broad leaves that are significantly more than grass. Uh, we will use between three and four ounces of glyphosate. Now, glyphosate is a non-select killer, which means anything you spray it on, you can kill it. You can kill poison ivy with glyphosate. You can kill honeysuckle with glyphosate. Now, glyphosate you can use per gallon of water is 13 ounces. And that's without being able to damage the soil if you want to grow anything in it. So later this year, when I spray out my food pot that we've never planted, I don't still have the ability to grow a food pot. Uh, glyphosate's my go-to. Roundup is expensive. Uh, Farmworks also has glyphosate. Drexel Imitator is glyphosate. Uh, there's a few other glyphosates that's anywhere between 41 and 51%. Um, this small bottle of Roundup, which is about a gallon, cost me $120. I never buy the Roundup. I usually get an off-brand name, but there's supply chain issues due to COVID and then due to the gas and the economy's going down the toilet. And I was really lucky just to find this. Uh, my imitator wasn't in stock, couldn't find it. That's, that's always been my go-to. It has a surfactant in it. We'll get over that in a minute. But with this it's so crucial to measure it correctly because it is expensive and if you don't measure it correctly you're just going to be wasting your money on a weed that would already be dead so the way glyphosate works is you apply the glyphosate to what you want to kill it usually takes two to four weeks for glyphosate to fully kill whatever weed you spray now glyphosate gets absorbed within the leaf and then it goes all the way into the root system. It blocks one of the proteins that has something to do with the uh, synthesis process and kills the entire weed. It's not just the top side, but it's a little bit slower than some others. Glyphosate is a post-emergent, which means that you spray it on the weeds that have already grown. But once it's on the soil, it acts as a pre-emergent for about seven days. So glyphosate's perfect for hunting food plots because you can kill and seed at the same time. The next herbicide we're going to talk about is Diquat. I don't know if Diquat is how you pronounce it. That's how I pronounce it. D-I-Q-U-A-T. Diquat. Usually when you find Diquat, it's for aquatics. Uh, or if you see a Roundup or a certain kind of herbicide that at your local homes or home depot that says kills fast kills within 24 hours that's usually diquat uh, you will see your results from diquat day one uh, you will actually look like if you spray your weeds on a hot summer day day one by day three they're going to be so dark brown that they've been cooked to the bottom um, i know roundup uses it in some of their fast acting as an additive diquat I've used on the pond, but I have to add a surfactant to it. Um, the problem with diquat is that it only kills what it touches. It does not go past the soil. The plant does not absorb it. It doesn't go down to the root system and kill the roots. Diquat literally turns what is above the ground dark, dark brown. Now the root system can regenerate itself and it will come back at some point there is no pre-emergent on it. It is a post-emergent herbicide. But if you want instant results, Diquat's what works. You can find Diquat in Weedrine. Farmworks makes them. Uh, Tsunami? Tsunami has the 
Diquat, DQ. All good stuff, but it's not a long-term solution. Um, we used Diquat on the pond, and we had to add a surfactant to it. The surfactant is an additive to your herbicide that either makes it stick to the leaf or it breaks water tension. So when you're talking about Diquat on a pond and you need a surfactant, you need enough surfactant that it breaks the water tension, essentially making it float or pushes the water away from what you're trying to kill. Duckweed, red sylvania, any algae. Uh, they have some high cost surfactants, but surfactants can be found in soap. You can use your dishwasher soap for example, or uh, Dawn. I use soybean oil. I think I bought this jug of soybean oil two years ago, maybe three. It's still three quarters of the way full. I have always used it as a surfactant. I use it in the mulch beds. I use it around the pond. And it's just a little bit. You only need about a teaspoon or two for two gallons. Now, if you're going to do aquatics, you're going to need significantly more than that. I would suggest somewhere around 10 ounces because you have to break that water tension. And the last one I'm going to talk about is Mesotrone. Uh, Mesotrone is more formally known as Tenacity. Uh, that's their active ingredient. Mesotone does not kill grass. So Mesotone is perfect for residential yards. If you have a small yard, I have a buddy that has the most beautiful front yard. There's not a single weed in it, pure tall fescue, and he's been using Tenacity and he spot sprays. And that's what Tenacity is meant for, is for you to spot spray broadleaves. It won't kill your grass unless you have some um, non-native to Ohio grass. Um, when I looked at the list, the only grass that I recognize that it does kill is Bermuda. I'd never heard of the rest, so perennial rye, Kentucky bluegrass, tall fescue, it doesn't affect. So you spot spray, give it two or three weeks, and spot spray it again. You wouldn't necessarily spray your whole yard, that's not what it's meant to do, but you don't really have to worry about overspray with it due to the fact that it doesn't kill grass. But it does kill broad leaves, uh, crabgrass, clovers, you can take it out of your yard pretty precisely with it. When you use Tenacity or you use Mesotrone, you need about one tablespoon worth per gallon, and then you need three tablespoons worth of surfactant. So you have to pair it with a surfactant. Now we're going to start talking about some things that, that bother me significantly when you walk into a Lowe's, a Home Depot. So this bottle right here, it cost me $120. You can walk to a Home Depot, you can walk to a Lowe's, you can grab the one gallon on a ground up. It's got the pump, it's got the wand, and it'll be somewhere about $20, $24. Well, if you look at the percentages of the bottle you just bought, it's somewhere around 2% glyphosate. That's pitiful. This is why people say Roundup doesn't work. It's not that Roundup doesn't work. It's that their pre-mixes don't work because they keep it so far back. If you look at like their uh, poison ivy, uh, they've got one for vines, ivy, poison ivy. It's, I want to say it was $40 when I looked at it online. It's only 18% glyphosate. When you look at their top notch dead in 24 hours silver one. It was, I believe it was 10% glyphosate and a little bit of diquat because that diquat makes, gives you that feeling like you're killing it instantly. But there's cheaper options where you get a higher percentage. So I've had this sprayer for maybe three years now. I bought it when we got this property. It's two gallons. I have sprayed the pond, I've sprayed around the barn, I've sprayed around the house for a solid three years with it. I've got no leaks, I have no problems. I think I spent $30 on it. And I have mixed our own herbicide because it's impossible to keep up with the prices and it's impossible to buy it pre-mixed because they cheat you and they cheat you badly. 
So what I use and what I like to use is I like to use glyphosate mashed with the surfactant. I can use glyphosate pretty much anywhere on the property. I will start off with a smaller dose just so I'm not wasting it because it is expensive and I'll spray everything with the smaller dose. Now what I'm about to show you in this video is that I sprayed the pond about two, two and a half weeks ago and I only did 2.5 ounces and I did two gallons at 2.5 ounces or I'm sorry I did two gallons at five ounces, 2.5 ounces a gallon. And I walked around the pond and I sprayed it. So this is where I sprayed around the pond uh, two, two and a half weeks ago. Uh, you can see a lot of the small stuff is dead. Uh, a lot of the bigger stuff is still hanging on. I felt pretty lucky that any of it died. Um, when you spray glyphosate or you put, or spray any herbicide, you want dry weather. And it had been dry. It had been dry for about three days. There was rain in the forecast the day I sprayed this. It was supposed to rain, I think, at 2 p.m. I got off work at 3 p.m. Skies were sunny. 4 p.m. Skies were sunny. 5 p.m. Skies were sunny. I'm like, I'm going to go spray it. Clearly the storms missed us. I'm going to go spray it. So I walked around this pond, it was a hot day. Um, I went around this pond twice, that's how far two gallons got me. And then I went inside, I took a shower, and all of a sudden I started hearing things hit the windows. And I looked outside, and all of a sudden our trees were bending left to right. We were getting 70 mile an hour winds. Uh, it was raining like I've not seen in the past couple years. It was one of the biggest storms we've had. It ended up knocking out power across Ohio. They ended up calling Indiana over because so many homes had lost power. And this was maybe 30, 45 minutes after I had sprayed around the pond and around the barn. So, you know, my first thought was that I just wasted all this Roundup. Nothing's going to die. I should have held off. I knew better, but I didn't. But the bottle does say that it only needs 30 minutes before it becomes rainproof. Now, I don't 100% believe that. Uh, if you add a surfactant, maybe. But this time I did not add a surfactant. And a lot of things survived the spray that normally wouldn't, even at that low level. Now, there are some big things in here that I need to up my glyphosate level on. But as far as it holding up to the storm and it's still killing a high percentage of what I sprayed, I couldn't be happier with it. Um, I spray this area every year. This is around the wood pile. Uh, the previous owners had, I believe, a flower bed of some kind. And when we moved in, it was all honeysuckle, so I cut it out. And all of that stuff grows now. But the glyphosate ran through it. I mean, it didn't stand a chance. I don't know if it's because it's in full sun. Now I can go back. I can just spot spray the big stuff that didn't die the first time. And then we'll see here in about two weeks what it's going to look like. Now, all this information I've given you about glyphosate, diquat, mesotone, surfactants, I'm going to put this all in writing at the back of the video. That way, if you need to, you can just take a snapshot of it. Um, my my measurements are correct I'm going to use this one for the food plot because it goes to a higher number this is what I use for my two gallon one I just measure it out and then the way that you put these in your sprayers is don't dump it into an empty sprayer uh, that's how I used to do it I put it in the empty sprayer I put the water hose in it let that water hose stir it all the way up as it came up it doesn't work what I do is I fill it halfway I fill up my jug halfway, and then I put my herbicide in it. Then I put the water hose back in it, and I let that water hose agitate it around as it starts to fill. And then we shake it a little bit, and we go. Now, if you look at, like, their website or Roundup suggests you stir it and you agitate I'm not going to sit here and stir something that's supposed to kill weeds. It's not going to happen. I don't have the time for it. I'm just trying to spray it and keep it pushing. So with that being said, I hope that you found the information I provided useful. Um, 
If you have questions, leave it in the comments. I am a big pusher for glyphosate because it works and it kills it to the root. I don't have any problems with Diquat. I think it's a pretty good additive if you want an instant result. And as far as the mesotone goes, I have a one acre front yard. We've got four acres in the back. I don't have nice enough grass to really mess with the tenacity. Um, it would take a lot for me to do that. And we just have too much going on around the property. But for smaller yards, if you want to make your yard look on point and better than the neighbors, tenacity is the way to go. So I appreciate you watching. I hope you found it useful. Like, subscribe, comment. Thank you.